Good day, everybody. I trust that you had a wonderful Easter season and that it was a time for reflection on what God has done for us in and through Jesus Christ. Our background scripture for today's message is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I trust that you will read the entire 15th chapter to give you an idea of what we want to talk about. The central message of this chapter is the resurrection of the dead. I would say in Paul's words, the reality of the resurrection. Now just as a background, uh, the church in Corinth was established by Paul on an 18-month eight, visit. Stayed for 18 months and, and preached and a vibrant congregation was established. But then they had to leave. And Corinth was a cosmopolitan city. Uh, people from different uh, cultures, beliefs, and religions congregated in the city. And so different influence came and influenced the church. But if you read our text in verse 12, Paul says to the congregation, if Christ then be preached that he rose from the dead, how is it? That I hear that there are somebody in the church that says there is no resurrection of the dead. Paul starts off the 15th chapter by saying, you must remember that I preached unto you the gospel. The gospel that saved you and the gospel in which you still stand. But then he goes on to define this gospel. He says the gospel is simply this. That Jesus Christ died for our sins. That he was buried according to the scriptures. But that he rose again according to the scripture. And that is the essence of the gospel. The cross is a central symbol for the Christian church. We recognize Christianity by the symbol of a cross. But the cross, I submit, would be meaningless if there had not been a resurrection. Somebody wiser than me once said, there would not have been a Christian church if the body of Jesus Christ was still laying in a grave somewhere in Palestine. So really what distinguishes us from others is that we believe that Jesus Christ did die for our sins, but that he rose again from the dead. Now Paul comes and says, I understand that there's somebody that says there's no resurrection of the dead. A person lives, he's born, he lives, he dies, and that's it. That's why somebody also said, eat and be merry, for tomorrow you die. But Paul then argues and says, listen, now if you say there is no resurrection of the dead, then what logically must follow is that also Jesus Christ wasn't risen from the dead. And if Jesus Christ wasn't risen from the dead, Paul says, look what the implications are. If Jesus Christ wasn't risen from the dead, then we are still in our sins. There is no forgiveness of sins without Jesus Christ raising from the dead. We as Christians believe that up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph all his foes. He arose a victor over the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Then Paul goes on in verse 20. After he has made the argument, he says, if you say there's no resurrection of the dead, you must understand that it means Christ didn't rise from the dead. And if Christ didn't rise from the dead, we as Christians are just wasting our time. But then in verse 20 it says, But now Christ is risen from the dead. And because Christ is risen from the dead, we have hope for tomorrow. Then as it goes towards the end of the chapter and it celebrates the reality of the resurrection, he says, death, where is this thing? 
Where is grace victory? He comes and encourages us. He says, therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And we know that our labor is not in vain because of the reality of the re resurrection. <coughs> Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the cross. But we thank you above all that we know that there was a resurrection. And because you conquered death, we, your followers, can also conquer sin and death. Forgive us our sins, we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake.